Hello. Now we discuss the espresso algorithm. So what does espresso do? It's a heuristic strategy. It starts with an initial cover which is provided by the designer. So initial cover over the set of product terms which are over the set of min terms over the set of implicants. Right? And with this initial cover, it, it is a cover because it covers at all the one terms in the function. Right? All the one product terms in the function is somehow covered by this initial cover. So provided by designer or extracted from hardware language model. Right? Then we modify the cover under consideration. How do we do it? We do it essentially through a series of expansions to form prime implicants and then cover the set of ones minimally right and find a minimal cover from the prime implicants that we have found then we do reduction and then again expand in another direction so this is the basic principle uh, which is followed in the espresso algorithm so given an expression it tries to see which terms can be reduced literally and in, in you li, re, reduce literally means we can reduce the number of literals in it to form primes uh, and then we determine its cover reduce it and expand it another and uh, expand in another direction this is repeated until a suitable solution is reached so basically what do we do we make it prime by expanding we make it prime and irredundant that means uh, then we, we, we find all the prime implicants and then we uh, discard all the redundant prime implicants. We find a cover of our primes which is not redundant, which meaning that if we remove another prime implicant, it will uncover some of the ones not being covered by any other prime implicant. Right? So this is an irredundant cover. After expanding all the, uh, all the ones, to the prime implicants, we form, get an, uh, we, we obtain an irredundant uh, co cover over the function, and we then perturb the solution by this reduction step. Perturbs this is a solution uh, using using a set of prime implicants which cannot be further reduced because um, in in the, if if we had expanded in this way, then it cannot be further reduced. So therefore, to now obtain a better solution, what do we do is to, to perturb the solution through a set of reductions. We will talk, talk about all these steps in detail and then reiterate until a small irredundant cover is obtained. So we often obtain good solutions, solutions, uh, however the solution in most cases will not be optimal. This is a heuristic methodology. And Typically, the size of the cover reduces um, and we over time and we obtain a limited size cover. Now, before discussing the espresso algorithm in detail, we need to understand how, are, how is the function represented in the espresso algorithm. So, it is represented inside a computer using a data structure whose abstract representation I will present here. So the mean terms in the function are represented on the vertices of a hypercube, right? For example, here, this is a mean term, this is another mean term, this is another mean term. So this is a three variable function and all these mean terms, all the eight mean terms have been represented on the vertices of a hypercube. Here, this is a cube, um, three dimensional. Every edge connecting two vertices, for example, this edge here, every edge con connecting two vertices change only one bit position, change in only one bit position between adjacent min terms. So this one is a min term here, this one is a min term here. This min term is 0, 0, 0, this min term is 0, 0, 1. So it has changed in only one position, the LSB position. Similarly, if you see this one is 0, 0, 0, this one is 1, 0, 0. It has again changed in only one, one position. So adjacent min terms which are connected by an edge on the cube always change by 1. 
bit position always change in one bit position now from the three variable representation how do we represent four variables for four variables we first obtain two three variable hypercubes these are two same three variable hypercubes and then we make connections accordingly for example this is a connection so between this and this we see that only the msb changes right in all other respects this three variable uh, hypercube and this three variable hypercube is same for five variables we du duplicate this whole structure this whole structure together we duplicate this and again make connections accordingly now before looking at the uh, espresso algorithm in detail we first go and look at each of its function so we said that most important steps in the uh, espresso algorithm is a loop is a loop which goes on reducing expanding and and getting an irredundant cover this happens over and over again until the cost is stabilized so these three functions expand reduce and irredundant these are the three most important functions in the espresso algorithm and therefore we need to discuss these functions first before understanding the uh, entire algorithm in detail so what does the expand function do Ex expand function takes as input f and r where f represents uh, the current cover over implicates that we have to get the onset of the function and we also have r the set of don't cares what does expand try to do it tries to expand the cubes in f so we said that we first initially we have some random initial cover from this random initial cover so this random initial cover will consist of a set of cubes will consist of a set of coverings which we call cubes or sub cubes uh, from the entire uh, cube representation that we have so it tries to expand the cubes in f with neighboring cubes and with nodes in the dc set to form larger cubes so what does it try to do it expands cubes in f so it takes one cube in f and tries to expand in a certain direction until f no further expansion is possible and how can it expands by using either one terms or don't care terms in a given direction so when no no further uh, expansion on one direction in, is possible then it will try to expand in another direction now how does it try to expand it takes essential subcubes and tries to expand them till they become prime subcubes what are essential subcubes an essential subcube is a cube containing a min term covered by no other cube it takes an essential subcube in f and expands it until it is prime this is what we said a prime cube is a cube which is fully expanded against the offset and cannot be expanded further if you further try to expand the prime cube by reducing one more literal say in it then it will cover some part of the offset okay so therefore it cannot be expanded as an example let us say this was an initial cube in f this was an initial cube in f and these are two don't cares okay these are two don't cares then we can expand in this direction and finally we can obtain this cube after expansion okay this cube will be obtained after expansion and we cannot expand it it further because let us say in the vicinity we have zeros somewhere we have zeros and hence we cannot expand this further now by this we can reduce the number of literals in the cube by 1 okay so this is the objective now implicants covered by an expanded implicant are removed from further consideration now we have already removed then it is removed from further consideration expansion reduces the number of terms in the expression okay this is how what we said it reduces the number of terms in the expression why because we are we are taking two or more product term and and combining them into a single product term 
That is why it reduces the number of terms. R is required, that is the don't care set is, set is required so that the function knows which nodes are in the offset, which nodes are in the offset and which cannot be expanded against because we cannot cover the offset, right, while expansion. The quality of the result depends on the order of implicant expansion. This is also an important point. Suppose we have a, a cube. If we expand in direction x, it will it, it may give me a much bigger cube than we expand than if we expand in a direction y. So, therefore, there there are loops in this expand reduce uh, in re expand e redundant reduce. This loop tries to expand cubes in different directions and try to obtain a minimal cover over uh, over primes, right? over essential primes. Now, heuristic methods are applied, determined to, to determine uh, this order. Heuristic methods are applied to determine this order. In which order should the implicants be expanded? And also in which direction, right? After this expansion step, we arrive at the irredundant step. What does the irredundant step do? It determines the minimal set of irredundant cubes covering the onset. Now we have already expanded using a set of primes, but all primes may not be uh, all primes may not be uh, essential. The, a few of the primes will be redundant. What do we mean by that? All the ones in that. Uh, in that prime cube is covered by some other cubes. There is not at least one one, that there is not even one one within this prime cover that is not covered by any other prime cube and hence this is a, and hence this is, this is redundant. Next we come to the reduce step. <coughs> so after we have done the expansion and the redundant steps, the solution is usually pretty good. But as we said, if we had expanded possibly in a different direction and the order in which we had, uh, we had decided to, to, uh, to expand the implicants, the order of the implicants chosen also determine the quality of the cover that we get. And hence, often after we have, uh, we have obtained one round and we have obtained one solution, the, the solution can still be, um, still be made better. Okay. There might exist another cover with fewer min terms and fewer literals. This is what we said. So what do we do? We shrink prime implicants to s the smallest size that still covers the onset. Okay. We, uh, we shrink prime implicants to the smallest size that still, so then now these, uh, these, curve, uh, these uh, prime implicants will not, more, not, not uh, anymore remain prime because we are shrinking it. However, while shrinking, we are keeping into consideration that we will not uncover any, anybody in the onset. We will still keep a cover of everybody in the onset. We can reduce the primes. But while reducing the primes, suppose uh, I um, suppose he, if, suppose in this example I had this cover here, and it was a prime cover. Now, when I reduce it, we still see that here was here was a cover because these are don't cares. This is still a cover. Okay. However, let us say this one is also an on. This is not a DC variable as is, uh, as, as is this one. Now when this was a cover, then if I, if I reduce it to this, if I reduce it to this, then this will not be, this, this on variable, this on vertex will not be covered anymore. If, if this on vertex is not covered by another prime implicant from somewhere else like this one say. Let us say you have uh, on another side, you have another cover for, for, this, for this onset, for this vertex on the onset, you do not have another cover. Then if you reduce it and, uh, and reduce it to only these two, these two vertices, you cover only these two vertices and you uncover this, 
then what happens it will completely it will completely not be covered by any other prime implicant and this is not allowed so we shrink prime implicants so what we say is that we shrink prime implicants to the smallest size that still covers the onset this allows the newly formed cube to expand in a direction different from the larger cube from which it was obtained now after i have reduced this i can now possibly Im now possibly expand in a different direction to allow this i do the reduce reduction step thus new larger cubes can possibly be obtained by exploding in the new directions the don't cares why have you used the don't cares don't cares are required to know which nodes in the cube are don't care and can be dropped without the least risk of losing the cover while reducing that cube for example here we had to don't cares and therefore we could reduce the cover to this we could reduce the cover to this huh? however we said that if this was not a don't care and the, and it was also not covered by any other prime implicant then we could could not have done this reduction in this way right this is what the reduction step is now after we have done the ex reduce expand e redundant steps for um, for a certain number of times so after reduction we will do again an expansion again obtain an e redundant cover again reduce and again possibly expand in another different direction after this we and all the while we are on doing this we are keeping the best solution that is obtained till now the minimum cover that is obtained till now the best solution is always kept so until the cost stabilizes we will go on doing it after this is done we will take a simulated annealing like approach perturb the solution completely and try to uh, try to go to a different part of the state space and again try to to do this um, reduce expand e redundant step in that part of the state space now how do we do that perturbation of the current solution we do it using expand uh, we do it using uh, reduce gasp and expand gasp so first we understand the reduce gasp so for each cube in f add those sub cubes in f that are not covered by other cubes so what what do we have in f as you said the current solution is present in f <coughs> the current solution is present in f now the current solution is a current set of uh, implicants which cover the onset of the function now we take that solution the current solution and then add those sub cubes in f that are not covered by other cubes for example here for example here we have <coughs> uh, for, e for for each cube in f add those sub cubes in f that are not covered in other cubes so what do we do here we have two covers and both of them are in f okay then we add this one this one is not so this one is a node this one is a node that is covered by both the cubes this cube and this cube however this cube and this cube is only covered by one sub cube right so so we we add this this uh, this cube and this cube to f so for each cube in f add those sub cubes that in f that are not covered by other sub cubes that are not covered by other sub cubes so we are saying that this cube this vertex is covered by cube this and cube this however this this vertex or this implicant is not covered by any other cover in f any other implicant in f and therefore we add this to f this is what gas does it uses d to ensure that these new cubes are not produced for just some don't care nodes the new cube that we form that we add should not consist of only don't care nodes then we come to the last step the expand gas this function takes as input the set g produced after reduce gasp and r so 
uh, th this function takes as input what reduced gas has produced me. So now in F, we have many other subcubes, right? We have many other subcubes which have been obtained after this reduction and addition of cubes that are not covered by other cubes, right? Now we expand from all the cubes and add them if they cover other cubes. So R is used to ensure that nodes in the offset are not included, right? The redundant, the redundant cubes introduced are removed later. So these are the basic functions of the uh, Expresso algorithm and we will now take a look at the detailed algorithm once more. As we said, the algorithm takes a given expression in binary variables as input and represents it in the form of a hypercube. The onset represents the nodes representing min terms which are 1 when the expression is 1. The offset represents the node Mm, the offset represents the nodes representing min terms which are 0 when the expression is 1. The DC set consists of nodes representing the min terms which are do not care values. Initially, the cubes in the onset consist of individual nodes in the onset. Now, the algorithm begins by expanding the onset against the offset. So, this is where the algorithm begins. So this is where the algorithm begins. It begins by expanding the onset against the offset. The cubes are expanded by adding neighboring onset nodes or DC nodes. This is what expand does. The cubes are expanded by adding neighboring onset nodes or DC nodes. Once a direction of expansion is chosen, once a direction of expansion is chosen, then it is fixed and the cube can expand further only in that direction. This is what expand does. So it keeps the direction of expansion fixed. When you cannot expand in that direction anymore to obtain a prime, you say that it's uh, to um, expand in that direction anymore, you, you obtain a prime implicant, right? <coughs> Once all cubes have been maximally expanded, the irredundant method is applied. So once this expansion step is done, once all cube has been maximally expanded, we apply the irredundant step. Okay, it chooses the essential cubes only, those covering nodes not covered by other nodes. It then removes those cubes, all of whose ones are covered by some other prime implicant. It removes all those nodes. This is what the irredundant step does. Of the remaining cubes, those are chosen which result in a minimal cover. Next, the reduce expression is applied. It shrinks larger cubes. So after this irredundant, we go inside this loop. Huh? We go inside this loop. We apply the reduce. So what does reduce do? It shrinks larger cubes into smaller ones wherever possible. The resulting new subcubes can then be expanded in a direction different from which they were expanded previously. And this possibly will give me a better solution. This lets different min terms to be combined to produce possibly larger cubes. So when we expand in a different direction, we will possibly get different prime implicants covering a different set of min terms. And these, um, this prime implicant could be larger than the previous prime implicant that we get. So why do we need to do all these steps? Because finally, we want to get a set of prime implicants which covers all the onset of the function and this cover is minimal in the, set it con in the sense it contains the minimum number of prime implicants in it. This is what is done. If a cube cannot be expanded in a new direction, then it is re-expanded in the previous direction. The irredundant cubes are then removed. This cycle of reduce, expand, remove redundant is repeated till the cost is stable. That is the expression cannot be further reduced. Next, a simulated annealing type approach as we discussed is applied. The intermediate solution is perturbed by adding new cubes. These are subcubes of existing cubes, right? 
these are subcubes of existing cubes which are not covered by other cubes. This is what the deuce gas does. The new set is then expanded. Then the redundant cubes of the union of the new set and the immediate intermediate solution are removed. This is what happens in this step. This new set is subjected to the same reduced expand e redundant iterations. This goes on. The above procedure is repeated for some predetermined time, right? So this whole thing is re pre pre repeated for some predetermined time until time is up to get a final solution. So espresso is an anytime solution, is called an anytime solution because the algorithm that we get can stop, can be stopped at any time and we will get a solution. So the more time we give to the algorithm, the solution is expected to be better and better. But at any point in time, if we stop, we will get a solution. Hence, it's an anytime solution. Okay. Uh, so a new solution can be obtained by perturbation of an old solution. We can repeat the above process while maintaining the best solution we obtain. So at any point in time, we always keep the best solution so that at the end of the whole process, after all the iterations that we have done, we ultimately get the final best solution, the final best covering and the, um, the minimum logic expression. So this is, uh, was an overview of a heuristic methodology for two level logic minimization. This is a standard tool that is used in current uh, VLSI design. And um, with this, uh, we, we have taken a brief look at uh, the logic synthesis step um, in the VLSI design process. Uh, we come to the end of this module with this uh, discussion. Mm -hmm.